it is a new level. We are favored. When a man is favored by God, he cannot be disfavored by men. I pray for all of us, both online and on site, prophetically, as choirs have they have said it, we are moving to another level. Another level of our experience in the Lord, spiritual vitality, financial promotion commitment to the things of God we are blessed we are favored thank you father blessed be your name Lord father speak to all of us both the speaker and the hearers let there be something that will transform our lives that will repackage our lives that will awaken our spirits and we make us what you have designed us to be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Praise the Lord. You may have your seat. I welcome everybody, both online and on site, to this celebration of the greatness of God, of the mightiness of God, in our minds. I'm not taking it for granted to be in this highly exalted pulpit altar. I appreciate our father and our mommy in the Lord for this real privilege. I'm not taking it for granted. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. Because I can see that in mommy. Praise God. So I also appreciate the my RP and mommy RP and all the pastorates. I'm not taking it for granted. Thank you so much. I also appreciate, by the way, Reverend Yinka is still our foreign mission. He only added another feather. Okay? He's just coordinating the WAMCO, that's West African region. Can we celebrate this man? Oyibo in a black man. <laughs> we celebrate you, Reverend. We also celebrate our matric. Um, um, uh, Mama um, Udunaike. Mommy, we celebrate you. We celebrate everybody. Today, by God's special grace, we are continuing with our team. And I believe God wants to do something special. We work where I have sunk and what we believe that God wants to do. The theme is blessed by his resurrection. Blessed by his resurrection. And when choir was singing and they said that we are going to another level, God was just ministering to me that every coup de sac, you know what they call coup de sac? Close road. No road. Dead end. By God's special grace, there will be opening. Yeah. Resurrection is talking about the opening. I hope you, I hope you know that resurrection is the the final moment in any religion. Other religions, they have their shrine of their founders. We are with the goat and worship. They have the grave of their founders. But what defines us is our, the resurrection of the great God. The resurrection of the master of the universe. The resurrection that defines Christianity. The grave is empty. Every other thing is fallacy. Whatever any man wants to say, without resurrection, there is no religion. Because you eat and die like animal and gone. But resurrection is the defined moment. Resurrection is what differentiates us. Resurrection is what gives us hope. Resurrection is what makes you to be in the church. Otherwise, go and eat like animal and die. And that's the end. But Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who made us to triumph in everything. And I believe by God's special grace, this is going to be a great moment this morning in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be speaking to us from cause 
S C U R S E from cause to redemption. If there is any cause in our lives, don't worry. This morning, by the atonement on the cross, the cause will be crossed by the cross. Yeah. Hallelujah. There is going to be a move that will differentiate you. There's going to be something special that will make you to be what God has designed you to be. If there is any malfunctioning in your system, there is power that can repair. If there is anything that the devil thought he has finished, I want to announce to you that God is just starting with us. It is resurrection that differentiates every other religion. What is Christian faith without resurrection? Paul said, it is, a vain, it is just useless without resurrection. What is Christian faith without resurrection? He said, we seated here will have been the most miserable. Hope you know, without resurrection. What is Christian faith without resurrection? It is a doomed future. If there is no resurrection, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, first, chapter 15, verse 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, it says, If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And what? And your faith is also in vain. But blessed be the name of the Lord because it's no longer in the grave. Significant of resurrection. This introduction. Then we we'll quickly move to our topic, which is from cause to redemption. Redemption and forgiveness were procured for us. Procured for us. Through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. By conquering death, Jesus provided a path for humanity to be reconciled with God. His sacrifice on the cross is believed to be the atoning for our sins and the sins of humanity. The one we have committed, the one we will commit. It is a settled matter. Resurrection is the defining moment where victory over death was assured. The resurrection signifies victory over the power of death. It is a demonstration of God's ultimate authority and the promise of eternal life. The ultimate authority and the promise of eternal life that those who believe there is a victory for us in Christ. You know how do I know it? Just be in Holy Ghost refreshing VG. What's the theme? It is finished. When you say something is finished, it cannot start again. <laughs> you know, I love mathematics small. But when we were proving theorems, at a point you will say QED. What happens again? Well, it's a oh thank you, Nasefini. When you say QED, nothing more. Anything after QED is not mathematics. After your encounter upon this mountain today, anything that is battling your life, the resurrection power and the victory procured for you on the cross will be delivered unto you. A better amen? amen. It was the resurrection that confirmed the identity, perfect identity of Jesus Christ. Resurrection serves as a powerful affirmation of Jesus' divine nature. It verifies his claims to be the Son of God, the Messiah, reinforces the fundamental tenets of Christian faith. That is the truth. It is in resurrection you have transformation of life. It is in resurrection. So, can we now look at the theme? 
Galatians chapter 3 from verse 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us. For it is written, caused is everyone that hanged on the tree. And verse 14. Can we read verse 14 together, church? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, listen. That the blessing of Abraham, can you just project Genesis chapter 12, and particularly verse number 3. Let's quickly look at Genesis 12, 3. Look at what the scripture say that the blessings of Abraham. Look at verse 3. Go ahead. Genesis. And he said, no, 3, I mean 12, 3. 12, 3. Okay. He said, I will bless that. They, okay. I will bless them that. Who was talking here? To who? And in Galatia, what did he say? The blessing of Abraham. Follow me. Please bring it back. And what? Cause in that cause thee. And indeed shall all families of the head be blessed. Now listen. There is a blessing inherent in your life the day you gave your life to Christ. It's wrapped in Abrahamic blessing. And that is why if you know Christ, even if, we are going to address that, even if your parents have caused you before, if they have used, you know what? Apology. If they, uh, 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 there is what they call Ogun Adabi, except you did not suck this breast, and they have used it to curse you, we are going to remove it today. <laughs> if your father has caused you, even if anyone has caused you, because the Bible says you are blessed in Abraham, you can't be caused by me. You can't. The cross and the cross. Christ had redeemed us from the cause of the law. From the cause of the law. He made a cause for us. The term cause generally refers to solemn utterance intended to invoke or inflict harm on us. That's a cause. You say, I cause you cause you. That's what inflict harm. Inflict problems. And this is not just speaking it. It is backed up by supernatural power. You know, words were framed by speaking words. Jesus, I mean, the Bible says, everything created were by spoken words. Even the, the Abalists, they believe in what is known as what? Incantation. Do you know we also have spiritual incantation? Oh, mama, mahi, they label shaking that la mahi. That's our own spiritual incantation. There was a man, a, a minister, was, was um, building his church. And um, the people said, you can't build this church here. So they came. They came with uh, arms, you know, and they begin to do ayajo incantation. Oh, whatever. They were saying, and the man of God was looking at them. At a point, they said, boom! As they were saying, he said, and he started speaking in tongues. And those people that came said, eh, can you see his own, we can't hear his own incantation, no. The verb devil will not hear your incantation. <laughs> because your, your, your own incantation is spiritually ordained. And when you speak it, you confuse devil. You confuse the cause that is on you. You confuse the sickness. You when you speak in tongues, power in heaven must stand. 
And they are all available unto us. Praise the Lord. So when they curse somebody, it means that with the intention of harming him or her. And that's what I want to quickly address this morning. There are so many terrible consequences of curses. Many terrible things. There are some people that are passing through what seem like elements of cause in our midst. I was preparing this, and God said he's going to remove it. There are two types of causes. There is what is called self-inflicted cause. I will show you in the scripture. Self what? Inflicted. And there is one that is God caused the heaven. Do you know that? I mean, sorry. God caused the earth. Do you know that? Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says, Cause is the land, the ground, because of you. When God caused the ground, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, I want to lay this foundation. Please, listen. And to Abraham he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. What happens? Curse is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it, and all the days of your lives, tongues and tussles, it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the land. So, humanity was caused by God because of disobedience. And because of that, what happens? So what you are seeing today is a byproduct of disobedience to God. Are you toiling and struggling? There are witnesses in the house. It's because of the cause. But that cause should not be seen in your life again. Should not be seen in my life again. Why? Because on the cross, the cause was crushed. Oh my God. Are you getting what I'm talking about? <laughs> because we are on the cross. The cross was what? Crushed. And anything that is crushed cannot live again. I speak to somebody's life today. As God liveth, every element, anything that look like it, it may not be it, but it seems as if the devil is putting a challenge in your life. The cross will crush them. Those of you online, listen very well. It's a prophetic message for somebody online. As God live it, every cause in your life, God is removing it now. The byproduct of the cross that God put on the ground is toil, toiling and struggling. Uh, yes, today, people are still struggling for sustenance. Sustenance. What to eat? What to put on? We have to go. What to say? It's my product. Until you come to Christ and your DNA is changed, there is a power in the resurrection. It is a mo defined moment. It changes everything concerning mankind. It is not religion we are talking about. We are talking about life. When God calls the earth, say tongues and tusks shall bring forth every grant every grant that was intended to provide peace, source of source of sustenance, has become frustration and adversity today. When God calls the head, there was spiritual implication of it. The brokenness introduced. Sin was reigning. And death was the ultimate. When God caused the earth. The spiritual implication was that there was a separation. If you have not given your life to Christ, you are separated from the commonwealth of Israel. You are far from the kingdom. When you're supposed to be the custodians of his wealth, it will be far from you. What you don't need, I used to tell people, one of the best things 
In those days, I don't know whether they do it now. When you are looking for a job, you don't negotiate allowances. What do you negotiate? The basic in those days. But I know this day they combine everything together. Because usually, your percentage of your housing comes from what? The basic. So if you can hit it big, then you have all other allowances, what? Big. I'm inviting somebody to hit it big today. I'm inviting somebody to hit it very big today. How do you hit it? By coming to the knowledge of the fact that your sins have been forgiven. There is a deliverance in the house. There is, you know, thank God for the choir. There is another level. There is, you are favored. I hope you know you are being envied by angels. You can't be, you can't be disfavored by men. We are being envied. You know the scripture says, say we are seated in heavens. Far above what? Principalities and power. That's what is happening. Now, let me tell you this one. Self-inflicted causes. This is a cause because what you have done in the past, there are some of us here today, though we are Christian, but the guilt of the past is still hurting us. You have even refused to forgive yourself. You are in the house. You are online. You are listening. You have done some things in the past. Even when God has forgiven you, you have not forgiven yourself. There is forgiveness in the house. Is somebody here today? You have aborted that big boy that will have ruled the world. Are you in the house? You have aborted that small, that beautiful girl that will have been a queen. I don't know what you have done. And many, many at times, you know, somebody was, well, somebody was sharing with us some time ago. He said, oh, you know, pastor, who I should make my girlfriend? I made him my husband. The one that I should make uh, husband, I made him my, what? Husband. That's a regret for life. Do you get the message? It doesn't matter that guilt is going to be wiped away today. Have you aborted before? God is going to forgive you. God can repackage your life. Have you cheated your spouse? And you are carrying the guilt? There is mess in the house. Let me show you an example in the scripture. Self-inflicted cause. In Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, the scripture says, oh, no, no, I want it to be projected, and let's look at it. I want you to see a very strong implication of self-inflicted cause. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bill Hall, his father's concubine. And Israel had it. Are you there? What happens? Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. Reuben went in to his father's concubine. The father had it. And the next phrase is a different story. Are you seeing it there? What is the relation between eh? In our what? Now, the sons of Jacob were what? Twelve. On informed mind, we be thinking that the story of Reuben committing that atrocity handed in that chapter. There are some causes that are waiting ahead. The consequence of that cause waiting ahead. And that's why we have to address it because of the cross. 
today. Reuben, the first lesson about the life of Reuben, that Reuben sinned. His father had it, but he kept quiet. What are you doing that the heaven is keeping quiet? What are that life you are living in the secret and we celebrate you in the church? What is that in my hands, even as pastor? That I'm hiding. Leaders. That we celebrate you in the church. Many of these things, God is looking at it. And you know what God is doing? He's keeping quiet. Oh, it's a dangerous thing. Husband and wife. If I offend my wife. And um, I, I just see nothing. It's not a big deal. And my wife just, she's just keeping quiet. She doesn't even make reference to it. Ah, that's a dangerous thing, no? Oh, yes. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen somebody that offended someone. The person just ignore him. He ignore him. The man was expecting the person to react. The man just ignored him completely. When he look, he look, he look. This one, no talk. Ah, this one, now halal. You know the story? Huh? Young eagles went for hunting. And he saw small, small chicks, chicken. And he just he went there. He said, and he carried one. And he went to mother eagle. He said, when I got there, I just picked it. And the mother was looking at me. He said, ah, I was looking at you. <laughs> Be careful. Because next time, where you will go, he will not look at you. Many, many at times we are living lives that God is keeping quiet. Even though we celebrate you in the church. Be careful. Reuben sinned. His father kept quiet. The second lesson. Be careful how you live your life. Because there are some acts that go to the future to wait. For his consequence to appear. I speak to young people here. You, are, you can abort anything. Ah, be careful. Hope you will not look for it with tears. Unfortunately, many of these things comes back, bounce back to pastors. The Bible says, who is blind like my, my servant? Because when the problem comes, you will still come to pastor. And pastor will be fasting and praying with you. Not knowing the kind of life you have lived before. Let's watch it, young people. How we are living our lives. There is a cross that can remove the guilt. The cross on Reuben showed up. He sinned. Listen. He sinned in chapter 35. Chapter 36, nothing. Chapter 40, nothing. Chapter 45, nothing. Chapter 48, nothing. And in chapter... 49, the consequence showed up. Look at what the scripture says. In Genesis chapter 49, from verse 1. And Jacob called on his sons and said, Gather yourself together, that I may tell you what will be for you in the last days. Gather yourself together. Hear ye, sons. Of Jacob and hearken unto Israel thy father. Verse 3. Reuben, what a beautiful dosa. What a great profile. But what a bitter hand. The conclusion of beautiful dosa and the conclusion of beautiful profile was a terrible one. Reuben, thou art. My first son, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellence of guilt, of dignity, the excellence of power. Verse 4 Unstable as water. May this not be our portion. <laughs> Thou shalt 
not excel. Because I remember chapter 35. That's what he's saying here. Look at what he says. He says, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. When was that one done? Long, long, long time ago. Then defiest thou he went up to my couch. Self-inflicted causes can be forgiven. I want to announce to us today. I want to emphasize that. I want you to know what you have done is not too bad that the heaven cannot forgive you. You have not sinned to the extent that your own sin is a customized sin. You know, some people may be hearing me online and say, look, this man doesn't know the kind of life I've lived. Oh, maybe some of us also. We have even, we have come to the saving grace, but we have not forgiven ourselves. We still carry this guilt. Still carry this guilt. It doesn't matter. You know, you know that curse on Reuben. Moses needed to reverse it long time later. Because it was a curse on his family. And it needed to be removed. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Who has made us to triumph in everything? There is a cross that crosses the cross. Maybe there is a lineage with a cross. Maybe there is a business with a cause. Maybe there is a life with a cause. It does not matter. Somebody has seen that there are some lands, cities, villages that they cause the land. I remember, you know, uh, where, where we used to be, you know, and um, the king was saying that the grandfather caused the land. And when the king was being installed, you, I don't know many of you will have read it or seen it, he, revert, he, revert, he reverted that cause. And I also stand as the servant of the Most High God with the combined anointing of our general overseer in the house. If there is a family that is caused, if there is a, a person that is caused, if there is a business that is caused, by the reason of the cross, is hereby crossed. <laughs> The Lord wants to repackage your life. The Lord wants to give you hope. It's not done with you yet. I have a positive example also. Remember Jabez. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, Jabez was, was, was given birth as a cursed child. That's what you can say. He said, the, the mother look at him, look at him, and look at him. He said, this one, you are a son of sorrow. Oh, my God. Everyone that it seems that they can call your name Jabez, the son of sorrow, the daughter of sorrow, may the heaven remove it today. <laughs> Jabez was not like any other person. That's a, that best recognized. In fact, anytime I read that place, I normally see between the line. The Bible says, that best was more, what? Honorable. Which means to say, in the simple English, his brethren were honorable. I don't know whether I'm making sense. If the Bible says what? More. You can't be more from nothing. <laughs> It means that his own, maybe even his own, that they call the son of sorrow. The mother called his siblings eh? the son of danger. Maybe the mother called his sibling the, the son that will not live. And I'm sensing in my spirit that some of us, we have been caused. In fact, there are Two of you here, listen to me, that you have been caused by, except you did not take this breast. You know, it's one of the highest calls from a mother. 
If your mother you, if your mother will use her breast to cause you, ha! You need Jesus to remove it. And such people this are. Can we burn our heads? Just wherever you are, listen to me on hand line. Just raise up your hands. You have elements of cause from that kind of environment. Your parents, any of your parents, cost you. I speak to you now. I speak to that person now. By God's special grace. If you want, raise up your hand. I will put your hands on your head so that heaven can identify you. Yes, I've seen the hand. I've seen the hands. Go ahead, go ahead. I've seen two hands already. But if there is any other one, your parents have caused you. Put your hands there. Just put your hands there. As I, I release this blessing upon you. Because of a Brahmic blessing you share, by the unction of the Spirit of the Lord, that cause is removed. <laughs> yes. See, put your hands there. By the unction of the Spirit of the Lord, from today, from today, the blessing of Abraham is your portion. Those of you online, I can hear in my spirit as you put your hands on your head. Heaven is touching you now. That cause is hereby turned to blessing in the name of Jesus. As I begin to wind down, Jabez made the difference. You can remove the cause by turning to God. The Bible says, and he called on the God of Israel. And God had him. It is the cross that has the supernatural power to revoke the harm. Revoke the harm inflicted on man because of the cross. It can be removed. God caused disobedience in Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 15 to 24. It's a terrible place. To be under the cause of God. When you look at it, you say, And it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his status, which are commanded this day, that all these causes, that's not our portion, shall follow you. He was saying it. He said, All these causes shall come upon thee. It will be okay. Not only that, he said, They will overtake. That's not our portion. Because you are not going to disobey God. You know, go and read it when you get home so that you be, be careful how you live your life. Say, cause shall thou be in the city. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. And cause shall thou be in the field. No, then where will you go again? If you are caused in the village, you are caused in the city. So where do you have to go? And that's why we have to be careful. But let's conclude by looking at the blessings that accrue to us. The second thing is the blessings of the cross. The blessings of the cross. At the cross, when Jesus Christ was on the cross, the death on the cross released so many beautiful blessings on us. The first we can see, the blessing a crew to us is the fact that there's atonement. Atonement is a blessing. Atonement of our sin. Atonement of our sin. Before the cross, the sin was covered. By the cross, the sin was removed. Do you get the point? When a man sinned in the days of old, they will kill animals to cover. And whatever is covered can be uncovered. <laughs> it is only the blood of Jesus that removes and cleanses without any spot, any blemish. And that blood, that cross, is in the house. It can do it for you. Cross is a symbol of atonement, signifying the reconciliation between humanity and God. Christians, we have to believe in Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. In Hebrews chapter 9, I think 22, it says, 
In fact, under the law, almost everything is cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness, neither release from the sin, this amplified, neither release from the sin and his guilt, or nor cancellation of the merited punishment. Kai. We are to be punished. Merited what? Punishment. Because the scriptures say, he that sinned must die. But when the cross, when the cross now came, the cross now removed the merited punishment that's supposed to be upon us, upon us. So you can't be under the sin again so that you can satisfy the flesh. No! You are more than that. Number two, blessing. We have redemption through the cross. We have redemption through the cross. The cross represents redemption. The heart to bind back or setting free. Redemption means to buy back from the slave market. And that's what Jesus Christ did for us. He bought us back. He bought us back by his precious blood. He bought us back and he gave us hope. I want you to know that you are not hopeless. We have Jesus. Jesus' death on the cross is the redemptive price paid to liberate you and I from the bondage of sin and its consequences. Its consequences. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, the scripture says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. The blessing of the cross. Number three, there is forgiveness of, in the house. The heart of the cross is the concept of forgiveness. Number four, I'm talking about, because I need to raise now. Number four, it was the cross that gave us love, demonstrated and sacrifice that is given to mankind. Love and sacrifice. We could see it there. On the cross. Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them. What a kind. Somebody is killing you. I read a commentary about how Jesus Christ died on the cross. When he was on the cross, somebody said, one of the Roman soldiers, even though it was written in the Bible, but the way he put it, I love it. He said, one of the Ro Roman soldiers came around to Jesus and he looked at his spear. He said, this spear is a long time you have touched the blood. Two for his side. And the blood was coming out because of you, because of I. And Jesus Christ still looked at the man. He said, Father, forgive him. Anytime you refuse to accept these gifts, you are leaning Christ on the cross again. Anytime we don't appreciate what the cross has done, it's making us to look like a vagabond. It's making us to look at somebody who's wayward. It's making us as looking at somebody who's ungrateful. I believe you will say like me, I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful for what you did. Number five, on the cross, victory over sin and death was procured. Number six, there is a substitute for you, for me, on the cross. Substitutionary atonement. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, he said, For your sake, he made him to be sin. Who knew no sin? For my sake. He made him to be seen. You knew no sin. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And salvation is there for you. Number seven, on the cross there is salvation. 
On the cross, there is reconciliation. On the cross, there is a New Testament. On the cross, we can see example of humility. Now, it is the cross that gives the victory. And that's how I want to end this, this message this morning. But before we finish, we are blessed because of resurrection. Resurrection has gone beyond controversy. Resurrection is historical fact that has been proved. And because of what Jesus Christ did, you have what it takes to be what he has designed you to be. So where comes that trouble? When you are blessed. Where comes that loneliness? When it's by your side. Where comes that valley? When you're supposed to be at the top. You know what the scripture says? The Bible says, you shall be the head, not the tail. You shall be above, not be near. The Bible says, you are seated in heavens, far above principalities. The Bible says, he that seated in heavens shall laugh. May the heaven cause you to laugh. There are some of you, the only thing you know for the past few days is weeping in the secret. I have good news for you. The cross will give you laughter. Because on the cross, your sin was judged. The merited punishment was removed. On the cross, Jesus Christ smiled on you. He said, Father, can't all those things. I don't know whether you have seen your picture of our lives. Can we rise? Can we rise? Maybe we have seen some picture of our lives. How we have lived our lives. And we have even refused to forgive ourselves. For those people online and those of us here, listen very well. You cannot continue to carry your body when the body has been lifted up at Calvary. You can't continue to go with your sin. You can't continue to live anyhow. You can't continue to live and carry your guilt. That's the first thing we want to do. Then we also give opportunity to people that want to come to the cross. Why we close our eyes? Let's wave our hands and appreciate him. Appreciate him for what you have heard. Just thank you. It is the cross that crosses the cause. The cross crosses the cause. Let's bless his name. Let's bless his name. Wherever you are, in the mood of prayer, I mean, the mood of prayers, if you are there, you want to give your life to Christ, you want to come to the cross. Wherever you are, please, raise up your hands. You want to say, Jesus, come into my life. Wherever you are, if, raise up your hand. You want to say, Jesus, come into my life. Anyone like that? Anyone? You want to say, Jesus, 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 come into my life. If you are raising up your hands, please come, come, come. Come to the front, yes. If I, I see your hands up, if you are raising your hands, come. Anyone raising his hand or hand, can you come? Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You raise up your hand and you put it down. But that's fine. But the point is this. <clears throat> there is forgiveness on the cross. When you come to the cross, Jesus will forgive you your sin. I want to make the second call quickly. Every eye is closed. You are being tormented by guilt. The guilt of the past is troubling you so much. The guilt of the past. You think God can forgive you. Wherever you are, just put your right hand on your head once again. The guilt of the past. You want to say, Jesus, the guilt of the past. God bless you. God bless you. The guilt of the past. Maybe you have cheated before. Maybe you have killed before. Maybe you have done something before. Whatsoever may be. The guilt of the past. 
you want to say Jesus forgive me as I call our mommy Gio to come and pray for you just make sure you put your right hand on your head the guilt of the past 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 just mommy please come pray for them you can stay there and pray for them if you so desire I can see some people putting their hands still make sure you put your hands on your head as mommy is praying God is going to forgive you he's going to repackage your life in the mighty name of Jesus Father God you said from causes to redemption you said you have redeemed us from the causes of the law because cause is Christ that has been hanged on the tree because of the causes of the past that may be manifesting in the lives of your people that are putting their hands on their head. We say as a congregation together, we said that root of that cause is rooted out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because on the cross, you have crushed the causes. Because on the cross, you said it is finished. And because in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, we say, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, everything has become uh, new. We said from today on, because those causes have been removed, uh, let everything become new in your lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the blood that was shed upon the cross of Calvary that is still potent. Let it wipe away all those curses. Let it blot them out. And we say we take those curses away. We nail them to the cross. Never to be active again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From today on, those curses will no longer manifest in your life. Amen. They are broken. I said they are broken. Amen. When those curses are broken, it said that the blessings of Abraham will come upon the children by faith in Christ Jesus. We say from today on, because those curses are gone, let blessing begin to flourish in your lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus, you are liberated. You are free by the blood. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give it to the Lord.